My father met Elvis in February of 1956 when he was working as a disc jockey at KRLD radio station in Dallas. Elvis had come to the station to promote some of his records and they made an acquaintance and visited for a few minutes. Daddy reacquainted himself with Elvis a few months later here in Waco, Texas in October of 1956 when Elvis played a concert at the Heart of Texas Coliseum. After the show, my dad was just so excited. He had seen Elvis's performance. He couldn't believe how great he was. And he went backstage to meet him. And he said, do you remember me? I'm the disc jockey that worked in Dallas, and you came up to promote your records. And lo and behold, Elvis had remembered him. And so they visited for a little while. My father was always very generous to strangers, and especially being impressed with Elvis. And he said you know, to him, just kind of off the cuff, come visit me sometime in my home. I'd love to have you. My wife would cook for you. We'd love to have you in our family. You know, just next time you're around, come to town. and We'd like to uh, show you around. And it was just a standing offer. And after that, in 1958, when Elvis became stationed at Colleen, Texas, just a few miles from Waco, uh, when he was in the Army, he did just that. He would come visit our family on the weekends and just show up unexpectedly. He would never call first. He would just drop in. And it was always very exciting for us. He would bring his friends, his entourage, his girlfriend at the time, Anita Wood, and they would just pull up in several cars in front of our home and pile in the house. And my mother, who you know would be running around in her robe and her house shoes or whatever, would suddenly run and go back and put a dress on and start cooking. And it was always very exciting. It was a lot of fun. Um, there was never a dull moment at that time. Also at that time, it, the word got out that Elvis Presley was staying at our home sometime and so our phone number was unlisted after that so that people couldn't call us at all hours of the day asking if Elvis was there and we would just look out the window at times and there would be teenagers standing across the street just staring at our house or a big mob of teenagers would come up to our house demanding to see Elvis when they thought he was there. So we felt like we were on stage a lot of the time and we also felt that we were there to protect Elvis and keep the elements away from him uh, that made him so nervous at times unless he wanted to go out and sign autographs and then we would be right at his side. So it was a very exciting time um, in his early career. When Elvis would come visit and listen to the new records that my father had bought for him, he would sometimes fix on one record and he would play it over and over and over to almost to the point of just saying, please turn it off, we've had enough, you know. And one of the records that he liked at the time was called Happy Birthday Baby. And he sat down at our piano one day, at my piano, I mean, rephrase that, and played that song and he and Anita and my father sang it, and they just had a ball. Elvis loved that song, and he played it over and over with uh, my dad and Anita providing harmonies, and he would change up the song a little bit to make it sound different, and he loved to do that. And Daddy was able to uh, actually get him on tape singing that, which is great, and we got home movies of him playing our piano, sitting in our living room uh, at our house in Lasker, and that was just great. I mean, there were people there, having a good time. My brother and I were there as little children and Elvis was just having a good time. He would, um, uh, he loved to eat little sweet pickles and he was eating some sweet pickles and at the same time kissing me on the cheek and I'll just never forget that. It was really um, um, interesting, you know, the smell of the sweet pickles, Elvis and these bright lights shining on my face as a little child. It was really funny. And um, so we got some of these things on tape, some of these really nice shots. We have pictures of Elvis, uh, movies of Elvis sitting in the pink and black den that my father built for him. And 
in one of those shots, he's smoking a cigar. And that was another thing that my father always had for him in the room. Um, Daddy had a little glass cigarette box that everybody used to in the 50s, I guess, they kept them on their coffee tables and they would be full of cigarettes. Well, Daddy would put Elvis's cigars in there and no one would smoke them until Elvis came. And he always enjoyed that special touch that we had there for him in our house. There was a story too about my folks were just sitting around the, the dinner table one afternoon, after lunch, I believe, and mother had a pot of beans on the stove that she was preparing for dinner that night. And a knock comes on the back door and they open it up and there's Elvis and his mom and dad and Anita. And they were on their way from Fort Hood to Fort Worth to see a movie. And my folks were just shocked, you know, here they all were together, they just showed up on their doorstep. And they walked in and they made them at home, you know, made them feel at home as usual. And Daddy asked if any of them were hungry. And Elvis was on kind of an unusual schedule, you know, he would sleep all day most of the time and, and be awake in the night. So I think he had just gotten up maybe an hour before that and he was hungry. And um, so Daddy said, can, can we go to the store? We'll get you a steak, we'll get you whatever you want, you know, just tell us what, whatever you want and we'll go get it. And he said, well, uh, what's in that pot over there on the stove? And that was the beans that my mom was cooking. And she kind of sheepishly said, well, I'm, I'm cooking some beans for dinner. They're just some pinto beans. And he walked over to the stove, and he pulled up the lid of the pan, and he looked in there, and he goes, oh, that smells good. Can I have some of those? And she said, sure you can, you know. So she served up beans for the whole group of them. And um, they visited, they ate, and then a couple hours later, they were back on the highway going to Fort Worth. To their moving. So I thought that was a really interesting, sweet story. When Elvis was at Fort Hood and he started coming to our home more often, my dad decided to turn a little portico that we had on the side of our house into a den or a stereo room. And so that's what he did. And he decorated it in Elvis's favorite colors because he wanted it to be Elvis's little den and room and you know whenever he would come visit. And so daddy put black and white carpeting, kind of a speckledy looking um, carpet on the floor. And there were bookshelves in there along one wall and they were painted in Elvis's favorite colors at the time which were pink and black. And daddy bought glasses and uh, you know drink glasses and iced tea glasses and things that were in those colors. We had it, the whole thing decorated. Uh, Daddy even bought a stereo, it was a hi-fi stereo, uh, what we used to call a, a hi-fi, and it was black lacquer, real shiny black, that matched the shelves in the, in the room. And so he put that in there, and every time Elvis would come, Daddy would have the latest 45 singles out so that Elvis could sit and enjoy them. Elvis loved to listen to all the latest music, it inspired him. Uh, he, he loved to hear the new artists and just had a ball with it. He loved singing all the songs that were out that were popular. He would do anything but his own songs. Um, I think he was maybe a little, I don't know what the word would be, maybe um, sheepish about performing them outside of the, the stage setting. So he liked to perform other people's music when he was at our home. 